announcements. First of all, uh, Gambit C4.0 has been released. It's still a demo. Also, uh, I really. So, uh, let me clarify the, the title of the presentation. <laughs> the 90 minutes is not the time to write the compiler, but to explain it. <laughs> uh, the goal of this talk is actually, um, or rather, the motivation of the talk is that several people have been asking me, well, how can you compile Scheme to C? I mean, what are the difficulties? Can it be done? You know, what, what are the problems and so on? And, um, and they're not necessarily very complex. And I think that in principle, 90 minutes should be enough to present the, the major problems in compiling Scheme to C. So this, this presentation is not about Gambit C. It's about a new compiler called the 90 minute uh, Scheme to C compiler, uh, which is about 800 lines of Scheme code, so it's not very big. It actually does all of the difficult things of compiling uh, Scheme to C. So, um, the goals are to explain how Scheme can be compiled to C to give you enough details to do it at home, if you're so inclined. Um, I actually have the source code that you can also take off of the, uh, the web um, if you want to experiment with that. So I want to try to explain all of, the, all of this in about 90 minutes. Of course, I wouldn't be able to go into the detail. Um, my original goal was to actually do a source code block to, to go through all the, the pieces that, uh, that just won't happen. <laughs> Um, so non-goals um, of this compiler is to be RNRS compatible. It's actually a, a, a reduced subset of scheme that is sufficiently powerful to actually see how you could um, you know, implement continuations and that kind of stuff. Um, but it's not really in any respect uh, close to compatibility with, with any standard. Um, it, nor does it do anything about C interoperability or anything like this. It's really how can you translate a C program into a C program. Um, no optimizations, performance has, has never been a, a, a goal. Um, I, I, and I won't explain optimizations and, and, and uh, implementation of the end of C and so on. So you'll. Um, Appreciate this talk if you are a coder, if you like code, I'll be showing a lot of code, um, a lot of sort of scheme type uh, code, uh, with continuations, uh, high order functions, and so on. Um, so it helps if you actually know uh, how to program with higher order functions. That'd be sort of a, throughout the, the presentation, I'll be uh, using higher order functions. So why is it difficult to compile Scheme to C? Um, actually, Scheme has a lot of things that are neat, that we like, and that C doesn't have. And here is a list. Um, C doesn't have tail calls. Okay, and that's, that's probably the most difficult thing to work around, is uh, the fact that Scheme does have tail calls, and uh, when you do a tail call, it has to be a tail call in Scheme. Uh, it can't take any stack space, any um, space in, in continuations. Uh, and in C, when you do a function call, uh, you usually consume stack. So that's, that's a problem. Um, in Scheme, there are first class continuations, uh, and obviously in, in, in C, there is no such thing. Um, there are closures in Scheme and not in C. You could say that C++ has a kind of um, closure, or there's a way of simulating closures with the object system, but here I'm targeting a C. Um, moreover, closures have indefinite extent, which means that if you create a closure somewhere, um, it can actually live for as long as is required by the program. So you could actually return a closure from a function, store it in, in a data structure or something like that, and Essentially, the garbage collector has to be in charge of retaining um, the closures. 
And finally, there's a garbage collection, which is, doesn't exist in C. So uh, the implications of this is that we can't use C function calls to translate C function calls. And that's a big hit, because uh, it would be the natural thing to do, represent the scheme function as a C function, uh, use C function calls to call uh, the C functions, and everything would be nice. And because of the, the absence of tail calls in C, we can't do that. So what, we have to find some way to, uh, to work around that. Um, we also have to implement continuations, um, first class continuations, um, closures, and we also have to set up the system so that garbage collection is possible. So we have to tackle all of these uh, problems. And as I, I said in the end, uh, the rest is actually easy. Left as an exercise. So, uh, once these things are solved, the rest is, is, is uh, well, it's a lot of work, but it's sort of you know, manual work. So let's go to each of these um, issues and see uh, what is what I mean. So let's look at tail calls and garbage collection. Um, here's a, a small function. Um, function, of, function of two and an x. Um, then zero, we return the uh, the car of the pair x. So x will always be a pair. Uh, otherwise, we call f recursively, and we just decrement the value of n, and we pass in the pair here, which is. Uh, the, uh, the content of the critter of the old pair and the sum of the current critter. So, can anyone say what this does? Yes, sir. <laughs> so, it's Fibonacci. <laughs> it is, it's just a weird way of writing Fibonacci so that you can see the problems. So, here we have a recursive call to F, and because this is a, a tail call, um, this actually runs in constant space. So whatever the, the value of n, um, this will, will run in constant space. If you disregard the size of the, uh, the numbers, because actually the numbers take a lot of space because the Fibonacci sequence grows very quickly. But if you ignore that, um, it actually has to run in constant space. Um, moreover, we're creating pairs here, okay, and the pair that's created for one function call is actually no longer needed for the next iteration of the of this new queue. So actually, the, the pairs have to be reclaimed as the as the program runs, and there's only one pair that's live at, at any moment. So uh, all of this um, means that this program runs <coughs> in constant space. Look at, at the closures uh, issue. Um, in scheme, functions can be nested, something that C doesn't have, and variables are lexically scoped. So we can have a, a function like this, add all, which will take a parameter n and a list, and which will just add n to each element of the, the, the list of numbers. So we use map. So we map over the list uh, LST, and the function that we pass simply uh, adds n to uh, the element x. So here we have a closure. So this thing here is a closure that has to somehow remember what the value of n is so that it can apply it, it can add it to each element of the list. So if we uh, say add all 1 to the list 10, 20, 30, we get this. If we add 5, then I think we'll add five to each element. So just a little bit of terminology, uh, which I'll use uh, later on. Um, so if we look at the body of this uh, lambda expression, there are two variables that we're at, uh, um, accessing here. X and N is actually a local variable, a parameter of the function. So we call that a bound occurrence of X. So actually the definition of x is actually in the function that, that we have here. And n is what is called a free variable. So it's a free occurrence of the, the variable. And it means that in the program, n has to come from some definition that's outside of this lambda. And this is what's causing the, well, first of all, that's what the power of closures is. 
that you, you can do something like this, and it's also the problem we have to find a way of actually um, uh, transporting the value of n from the first lambda into the second lambda. Um, so the last comment down here is just to say that um, the act, when we access x, it's, it's fairly easy to understand how we can do that. So if we have a stack frame that says, well, we have the value of x on the stack frame, then the reference to x here is simply uh, referencing a slot on the stack frame. It's the end here that's less obvious how to access that value. Another problem is the extent of the closures, that, that is, how long they live. And uh, closures uh, can actually outlive their parent. So we can have a function, this is a classic example of make adder, a uh, function that takes um, uh, an integer n, a number n, and which will return a function which takes an x and will add x and n. Okay. So uh, when we call make adder, okay, for example, right here, we get a call to this function which will return a closure. Okay, so the closure actually outlives the, uh, the activation of the parent. Uh, and then we get the, the closure inside here, which is then passed to map, and then this ends up adding one to each element of the list. Okay. So we can't, um, <coughs> we can't use a, a traditional stack allocation for stack frames, um, for activation frames, because um, if we, allow the, the traditional implementation is that when the function returns, the, uh, the, the activation frame is, is reclaimed. Um, and if we do that, then the activation frame that contains n, okay, will be reclaimed when make adder returns. And then there's no way to actually get to the value of n. So the closure has to remember somehow um, um, the parent activation uh, frame, and it's up to the GC, the garbage collector, to retain activation frames when they're no longer needed. Um, okay, the other problem, first task continuations. Um, so in Scheme, we have uh, call CC, an operator that allows the, the programmer to actually access the continuation and then to arbitrarily at any moment return to that point in the program. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with continuation, but I, I basically have a short explanation of, of the concept here. So um, a continuation basically denotes a suspended computation um, that is waiting to receive a value. And an example is the evaluation that you have here. If you type at the read of the square root of the sum of the call to read and one, when this is run, the call to read actually suspends the program, waiting for the user to input uh, an number. So the truth is you can think of the program as being, as having a continuation, a suspended continuation, that is waiting for the value that read will return, and then this continuation will go ahead and add one to the value that it receives and then compute the square root and then print the, the result and then uh, go on to the next uh, redevelop print loop interaction. So that's, that's sort of the, the, the basic idea of continuations. So call, uh, with current continuation, we call CC uh, operator uh, or procedure in C, uh, turns the continuation into a function. So continuations are actually implicit in C, and with the call CC function, you can actually uh, reify, make real this implicit continuation, and then use it in your program. And call CC will transform this implicit continuation into a function. And when you call this function, it actually will resume the, the continuation that it corresponds to. So here is a very simple example, and it's modeled on the previous uh, example. 
I replaced the culture B by a culture called CC. So here we're doing the square root of the sum of a culture called CC and 1. Call CC is a procedure, so it has a continuation, which is exactly the one we had in the previous example. Namely, that if we feed a value to this continuation, it will add 1 to the, the value, uh, to the square root, and the result, and so on. So what is happening here is that call CC, when it's called, receives an implicit continuation, and actually will call this receiver function that we have here, with as an argument the function that represents this continuation. So inside of here we can we can use cont as a function and when we call this we're actually returning to this point in the code, to the continuation of the call to call CC. So if we do something like this, multiply two by cont of eight, well cont of eight, this call actually returns from the call of call CC with the value 8 as 1 and the square root of 9 is, is 3 and that will be printed. So actually this part of the computation isn't even uh, used. This call never returns. So when, when the continuation is invoked, it's basically uh, a transfer of control from one point of the program to, uh, to another point of the program. By the way, if you have any questions, uh, So this is great for doing other things. Uh, Backtracking, co-routine, multi-threading, non local escapes, all of these things can, uh, can be done with, uh, with first class considerations. Can read be implemented more easily in the considerations? Can what? Read. Well, read, I would say read can be implemented more easily, but you can implement a threading system more easily. So in fact, when read, blocks on your um, on your device that's not ready yet, then the thread system could capture the state of that process by essentially getting its continuation, storing it in the process descriptor or something like that, and when the device becomes ready, the continuation is basically invoked. So it, it's not per se for read, but for the thread system, uh, you can okay, so it's easier basically with continuations to make read by thread size for... Well, what's one. easier is actually to express all of this within the scheme. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do we call the continuation? With a function call. So if you use a function call, so this count here is a function. Okay, It's a function that, that you can use in your program, but it's linked with the implicit continuation that you have here. Okay. <laughs> the call to call CC mm -hmm. has a continuation. Okay. All, all okay. functions that are called have a continuation, which is what remains to be done after the function returns, or once the function returns. Okay, so this is a function, call CC is a function here. So it's called with a continuation, which is, as I said before, a computation that receives a value, adds one to it, computes the square root, and then prints the result. Okay, so call CC takes this implicit thing, this implicit continuation, okay, and actually makes it real in your program as a function. Here you can actually use it from this point on as a function comes. And if you use it, if you call this, this function, then you actually resuming this continuation, you're, you're transferring control to that continuation, and computation keeps going from that point. Uh, we need an example. I, if this is the example, I don't understand. <laughs> well, um, if this is complete as an example, I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have you said like set jump and long jump? Yeah, I was just going to say that. So in C, do you use set jump and long jump? No, you can do threading with that. Okay. Huh? You can do threading and stuff like that using that.